Hello. Can you still hear me? Wait. I can't hear you, Kate. What did I do? Can you hear me, Kate? Can anyone else hear Kate? <gasps> Sousa. Can you hear us, Sousa? Oh, hi, Father Chris. Anyone hear her? Kate? I don't think anyone can hear you. What is happening? Well, hi everyone else. Uh, I'll talk in behalf of Kate. She is saying hello to every single one of you. Uh, I say hi to Father Chris. I can't hear you, Kate. It's okay. I'll talk in your behalf. I can't hear you yet. Yes, Susa, I actually buzzed my hair. No, I can't hear you yet, Kate. Um, yes, um, I'll, I'll say hello. For those who don't know me, it's, my name is Freddie. Um, oh, okay, so at least you can hear me. Because uh, we're, we're... No. No. <laughs> try, try taking your, your headphones out. Okay. I, we can't hear you. We can't. Uh, try it. Can you go back out and back in? Or would that be impossible? Adam? Gallon agrees that we should come back in a couple of seconds with Kate. But if anything, I just want to say a happy um, Divine Mercy Sunday. How are you guys doing with that? Oh, thank you, Susa. Yes, I cut my hair really, really short. Because I had decided, to, you know. Kate says hi again, <laughs> for those who can't hear her. Um, we're figuring this out right now. Don't worry, guys. We're still getting lots of people in. But how is everyone doing today? What have you been doing for Divine Mercy Sunday? It's quite different now for all of us. So what are you guys doing now? I'll share my story. I uh, woke up a little early than I used to. Um, my, my early time is uh, 8 o'clock. Yes, that is pretty late for some people, but that's early for me. Because it's, uh, you know, out of school. Who cut my hair? Uh, my mom's a hairdresser, so. Can you hear I me get... now? Whoa, we can hear you, Kate. This is perfect. Oh, great. <laughs> Thanks, Dad. I'm going to just leave my headphones out then, if that's what's working. Um, um, perfect. That works for me. Yeah, you, awesome. you sound perfect. Okay. I was, I was... Hi, everybody. It's so nice to spend some time with you. Um, all, all of your chat messages left, so hopefully I didn't miss too much, but. My name is Caitlin, for those of us who haven't met, um, but my, my friends call me Kate, so uh, I'm sure Freddie was just filling you in on what, um, that it's Divine it's about, Mercy Sunday. Yeah, <laughs> as I was kind of sharing, they are talking about Sorry. hair. Where are we hair talking cuts. about hair? Um, my hair is so long um, right now, and um, I think the first thing I'm gonna do, maybe like besides saying hi to everybody I haven't seen, since quarantine is get a haircut because oh. it is hard to tame the main people. It's a lot of work. So See, I was telling them I'm a, my mom's a hairdresser, so I don't have that problem. Oh, really? Yeah. So that I'm is nice. feel, yeah, I just go like say tomorrow, I'm like, mom, can you just fix my hair for fun? Fix it up. I'm pretty sure like, I read that Zuza likes your hair. Yeah, she said that. That's what we talked about. She's like, That's so funny. So are you an early bird or a night owl? Myself Whoa. is I'm definitely a night owl. I think me school too. did that to me. Yeah. 
I, I used to do morning like too. Look at that. It's Birds hard. of a feather flock together. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> so fun. Um, I was wondering if you want to do a quick introduction of yourself. Um, yeah. Because you haven't hosted with me yet. I know you I have well, not. But like no yes. one, other people may not. So if you want yeah, to introduce yourself. So for those who don't know me, I am Freddie. I'm part of the Pure Life core team as well as Kate. Um, but yes, um, what do I do? I'm a student as of now, as of six years, still in university. Do electrical engineering for those who are engineers. I'm there with you. Um, other than that, I do youth ministry at my parish. And I also just, you know, love God above all. And that's my life. That's do you truly... like any sports, Freddie? You're a sports Ooh. guy. I, I do every sport there is. Um, I did soccer was the mostly that I did. I did that. Lots of years of soccer. I also played basketball, volleyball, hockey, golf, you name it, dodgeball. I remember, oh yeah, dodgeball, funny story. I When I did CCO one year, I did, I did, did do dodgeball, broke my pinky doing that. We'll always remember that. Doing CCO go. dodgeball breaks your pinky. Break your pinky, sorry. I was like, you cut out for a second. I was like, you broke what? My well, pinky. that's so, that's, yeah, I'm yeah, just leaving that, that. That's interesting, yeah. eh? <laughs> it was me and my friend. It was me and my friend. Did you have you know? to cast it? Yes. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Did you get too was... hard for that? No, it was just really funny because, you know, it's like a CCO event. And then next, you know, me and my friend broke our pinkies. So we have to both go to the hospital. Same doctor took care of us. x so That's such a true missionary wound if there yeah, are we're... any. Right? We were wet. It was so hilarious. Funny. Yeah. So I have to get surgery on my finger, but that's another story. What parish are you from, Freddie? Uh, Sir Martin St. Francis. So it's a Spanish and English. So yeah. puedo hablar español también, if I want to. But that was in sí. Spanish. <laughs> <laughs> my yeah, limited so Spanish. It's a beautiful parish. It's very vibrant and alive. And every time I've yeah. been, I've just been welcomed with open arms. So such that's a what we try to do. Community. Yeah. That's what we try to do. Amazing. Well, I'll quickly introduce myself because I know we have some new viewers. So my name's Kate and I have been hosting our virtual lives um, for the past three weeks now. I'm headed into my fourth year of public health and health systems at the University of Waterloo. And to say fourth year now is just like, oh, it feels so good. So <laughs> we are currently like in the final stretch. Um, so yeah, in my spare time, I like to run. I like to read. Um, yeah, and I'm just a lover of all things St. Therese. I am a big supporter of the little way. And maybe it's because I barely reach five foot four. So I am a little person, but um, I just love her simplicity and her joy in the little things. And um, my home parish is uh, St. Joseph's in Stratford. And uh, so I'm currently back home, obviously, because we're all quarantining i'm in my room right now but um the priest who's joining us later on father trish uh father chris, chris Petrashka, pardon me uh he is our one of our three parish priests so um him and i haven't gotten to know each other a whole lot because um i'm just i was coming back um but i'm really excited to get to spend more time with him tonight so yeah. we're really blessed for his wealth of knowledge um if you are interested later on, Father Chris um, records his homilies every Sunday and they are available on the parish um, Facebook page. So maybe later on I will have him uh, do a little bit more about that. So anyway, uh, I want to quickly go over the agenda for this evening. Um, so uh, Freddie and I obviously introduced ourselves. We're really happy that you're here and yes. spending your uh sunday with us sunday. yes happy divine mercy sunday yes happy um, everyone this is awesome look at you even have a divine mercy image behind you i have two actually you do i actually I have like that. three and then like four in my room it's something i picked up over my mom Ooh, <laughs> this is my little one right now but yeah are you praying so what we're gonna do is we're going to be praying the divine mercy chaplet um, I have made slides, which I am really hoping work. If you've never prayed the Divine Mercy Chaplet before, Freddie, did you want to give a quick kind of background okay. on it? Yeah. Okay. So for those who have heard of it, maybe haven't heard of it, it was all taken from San Faustina in 
She's Polish. She's awesome. Read. Um, it all came from her uh, book, The Diary, that she had. It's called Divine Mercy in My Soul. Great book. Um, recommend. She's a great saint. But through her visions, uh, Jesus kind of like revealed to her, her in her own prayers. I was reading part of it, how, how it was revealed to her is when she was praying, she was saying like the words we say in the prayer and she knew it wasn't her own prayer. And she's like, I have to like share this with like the church. And then the church took it on and we use the bits from the rosary to do it. And it's, it's truly for the sinners, right? It's the mercy of God that we're, and usually people recognize it that we do it always at three o'clock is usually kind of the time that you, you kind of do it as well. You also do the novena for today. So that's another kind of tradition that we do have. Yeah, it's a great prayer. I love doing it. It's super short. So it's like, why not do it? It's a couple sure. minutes. You want to keep talking while I just make sure that, yeah, I know. that do our think? sides are coming up? Yeah, one of the things that um, I also found, yeah, I have so many images of it as well. Um, that was a gift. This was uh, Pure Life gave those away as well. This was my grandma. She gave me this one with JP2. He's my favorite saint. Uh, great man. Great example of uh, how a man should be. Um, but yeah, divine mercy. I remember the first time I started praying, it was a couple of years ago. And I, it was like, why not do it at three o'clock every day? I put it on my phone as a reminder. And I started at three o'clock. It will come. And I'll just pray for it. And I grew to love the prayer even more. And in the prayer, rec you recognize that, you know, God is merciful. He loves you so much that he's willing to give you mercy. And um, that's just, it's just great for, you know, you to hear that. You know, we sin so much that, you know, it's good to hear that God is, is like merciful. Even Disclaimer. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Yeah, true. Yeah. We're not perfect. We're getting there. Hopefully. We are. The slides are ready to go. So awesome. what we're going to do is we're going to pray the Divine Mercy Chaplet now. So if you have a rosary with you, otherwise, unless you've injured a pinky finger, you should have 10 fingers. Yeah. This, um, see, yeah, it's my broken finger. Oh, it is. It still looks broken. Yikes. Yep. <laughs> It's like I get surgery. Orthopedic surgeon about that. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so we're going to be praying the Divine Mercy Chaplet together. So now that Freddie's given us a bit of a background, I've created slides in case you've never prayed it before. And I mean, I hadn't prayed it until like five years ago. So it's a very simple prayer, very repetitive prayer, but it really allows you to go deep into meditation. So um, Freddie and I will be going along together, but we hope that the slides will uh, be able to provide you with just a little bit of structure in case this is your first time or in case you need a bit of a refresher because, yeah, quarantine brain, it's a real yeah, thing. So happens. I'm just going to press start on the slides now. Um, Freddie, can you see them? Yeah, we're good to go. I can see Perfect. them. I feel so, like, um, yep, they work for the them. Divine Mercy Chaplet uh, or the Divine Mercy image. And Freddie, would you like to start us off? Yeah. So we're just going to start in them in the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We're going to start with on our Father, our Father, who art in heaven, in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation. But deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, Suffer under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell, and he ascended into heaven at the right hand of the Father. From there who come to judge the living and the dead, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Who, oh, in atonement for, atone for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. 
for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal, Eternal. I offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for sins and in the sins of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood and soul and divinity of your dearly beloved, our Son, Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body and blood, soul and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and the sins of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal Father, we offer you the body, blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. Have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy, holy mighty Lord. one, holy immortal one, have, have mercy, mercy on us, us and on, and on the, whole the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, Holy Immortal One, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, 
Holy Mighty One, Holy Immortal Holy One, Lord. have mercy Holy on me and on the whole world. Jesus, Jesus I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us in such beautiful prayer. Yeah, thanks for joining us, everybody. It's a good way to it's a good way to start the night. Yes, sure. best way to start. Definitely. Perfect. Well, um, this evening we have a talk planned for uh, you all. Um, our keynote speaker this evening is Sister Guadia Scass of the Cross of Mercy. Uh, Sister Guadia. Um, is of the Sisters of Our Lady of Mercy, the same order of St. Faustina, who Freddie was telling you about earlier. Um, and she speaks to pilgrims at the Center of Mercy about the great love of Christ for each person and the power of the cross. So at the beginning of Sister Guadia's talk, she asks oh, um, that we take a crucifix in our hand. So um, I have the crucifix of the rosary that I'm currently wearing, mm -hmm. uh, not wearing, holding. <laughs> Don't wear a rosary. <laughs> so you're not supposed to. Um, perhaps you have your rosary in your hand so you can use that crucifix. Uh, maybe there's one around your neck, bracelet, one on the wall. So we just invite you to now grab a um, crucifix so that you can partake. Freddie and I um, are going to mute our volume, um, mute our audio and our video. Uh, while it's playing so that you have um, optimal sound and if yes. uh, we don't want to overbear it. So um, we're going to play that. The talk is 20 minutes long. Um, and then afterwards, uh, Father Chris is going to come on. So yes. um, Freddie's leaving us, but I think yes. Freddie will call you back with us pretty soon. So Freddie, we'll thank you so much for being a uh, part of this evening. And oh, for all thank your you. help. Freddie's been a huge part in helping. So maybe you no can problem. Thank give you, Kate. a little goodbye on the side. <laughs> um, Bye, guys. Yeah. Okay. Bring snacks. Okay, guys. Get those snacks ready for the video. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> get snacks. Okay. That's what I'm that's what I'm doing actually. That's what Freddie's doing now. Okay. Yes. Um, okay. Uh do you I'll I can play it. Okay. Enjoy the video, everybody. Yeah, can play. It's really great. Watch it a couple of times now. See that. Okay. <laughs> I would like to ask you to stand up for a moment of prayer in silence. Let us pray for those who died in the concentration camp in Auschwitz and for their executors. Please take a seat. I'm quite sure that every one of you has a cross with you, crucifix. Um, it can be on your necklace or on your rosary beads. So now I ask you to, to take these crosses into your hands. If you have them on your necklaces, on your neck, so just take them off to hold them in your hands during the meeting that we will have, during the time we will spend together, okay? I will do the same. I want you to feel them, you know, hold them so that you feel them. The theme of the day is the cross.
And with, the, with starting with the video from Auschwitz, we unite with Pope Francis, who's visiting Auschwitz today in that very moment. He's there. He's praying in silence in the concentration camp in Auschwitz. So the theme of the day is the cross, and I'm to give a talk about the cross, but my life's theme is mercy. Yeah. I'm from the same congregation to which St. Faustina belonged. Uh, that's quite obvious, right? When you look at her, you look at me. Hi. <laughs> so my life's theme is mercy, and we are in the year of mercy, it's the Jubilee of mercy. World Youth Day is all about mercy, and the talk is about the cross. So, do we have a conflict of teams here? Are these two different teams? No. As I see the cross, I think about mercy. And when I think about mercy, the image of the cross appears in my head immediately. Because both the cross and mercy are about one thing. Giving life for others out of love. Mercy is not about definitions, and I'm not going to give you a definition of mercy. Mercy is about actions. Mercy is concrete deeds. Mercy is Jesus and what he did for us, dying on the cross. That's, that's the highest, the strongest um, expression of God's mercy towards us. He couldn't have done anything more than that and giving his life for us. To Saint Faustina, he said once he was sharing his pain. If my death on the cross didn't convince you about my love, so what will? He died for us, but the cross is the final act of his life. And it's like a natural or logical consequence of his lifestyle. Let us, now, let us now try to see that everything that Jesus did was giving his life for others. Everything was mercy. He calls us to imitate him. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. And do you want to imitate Jesus? Do you? I'm sure you do. You wouldn't come for World Youth Day if you wouldn't like to imitate Jesus. I'm sure you do. Can we imitate Jesus uh, by giving our lives on the cross? Not literally, no. Many Christians nowadays are persecuted and they um, actually give their lives for their faith, for Jesus. But I assume that most of us, we are from the countries in which situation is not so dramatical, not yet. Maybe one day, but not yet. So how can we imitate crucified Jesus? By giving our lives for others in our daily life, just like he did. Living for others and dying for others. Always the focus on the other person, yes? He, she, they, not me. 
Jesus said to Sister Faustina, I created the heavens for you. I came down from heaven out of love for you. For you, I allowed myself to be nailed to the cross. I lived for you. I died for you. Now please feel the crosses in your hands, squeeze them, and think for me. Everything from the very beginning was for me. Jesus created the world for me. He became human for me. He left his wisdom, his teachings in the Bible for me. He performed many miracles then and now for me. He gave his life for me. I would like these words to stay in your hearts so deeply that each time that you will see the cross, wherever it will be, in Poland, on when you go back home, each time you see the cross, you will hear these words in your heart for me. For me. Imitating Jesus, living for others and dying for others. Let us now shortly recall the way Jesus was giving his life on a daily basis to inspire us, to show us how we could imitate him in our lives. Remember as he healed the sick, raised the dead, forgave sins, taught about the mercy of the Father, as he spent days and nights with the disciples explaining everything to them patiently. The time he spent with the disciples, that was the, the true school of mercy. That was the daily learning of being totally for others. You remember their names, right? Peter, Andrew, his brother, James and John, Matthew, Thomas, Judas. Very concrete people with concrete characters, personalities. Some of them brighter, some of them less intelligent, some of them quick learners, some not, some likable, some not. And spending with them three years, days and nights, no vacations, no escape. Three years of giving them his time, strength, patience, school of mercy. And this is the area, uh, the area of daily contact of our relationships is the area where we can imitate Jesus. The crucified Jesus, the merciful Jesus living for others and dying for others. It starts with our daily little choices. And when a moment comes, we are ready to our, offer our lives in this final offering. But first, these are the little things like, uh, today Jesus calls you to love the other person, starting from the person that sits next to you, now, to your left and to your right. Love them. Show them patience. Show them understanding love. Lift them up. If you see today a person who's uh, down, you feel that is worried about something, lift him up. 
with a smile, with a word, with a gesture. Or maybe during your stay here in Poland, someone will feel sick from your group, and there will be a need of staying with this person for the whole day. And you will lose all the attractions of the day by staying with uh, your friend. You can choose this, living for others and dying for others. Not me and my pleasures, but I want to do it for you. I will stay with you. You are on my mind, yes. You are the center of my thought, not me and my needs. Today, this is what Jesus calls you to do. And tomorrow, he might call you to offer your life for the person to whom you will just smile today. Just like it happened with Maximilian Kolbe, the first saint to the right on the red poster, Saint Maximilian, Polish Franciscan friar, who volunteered to die in a place of a stranger in Auschwitz. He starved to death, and that's incredibly painful death. After 10 days without food and drink, they even needed, you know, to do, uh, they used some injection with poison because he all the people in the hunger chamber died and he was still alive, he couldn't die. So they gave him the injection. And this was the final act of love. But he wouldn't have been able to do such heroic sacrifice of love if he didn't love others with the sacrificial love in his daily life. These little things, this is what he practiced and later he became the hero, but he started with little things. And all his life through, he was, you know, like thinking about others, what to do, how to give them Christ, how to help them to, to come closer to God, to, to get to know God. He was consumed by the fire for evangelization. And he started, um, how would you say, uh -huh. he started publishing religious magazines. He opened a radio station. That's the time before the Second uh, World War. Um, he, he founded the biggest uh, convent in Poland for, for men. And then he even went to Japan to evangelize the people in Japan. He, he didn't know the language, but he simply wanted them to get to know Jesus. So no matter the cost, he went there. Afterwards, in the concentration camp, his life again was simply a gift for others. Though it was forbidden, he celebrated masses. At night, people were searching for him to come and talk, to confess their sins. You know, he didn't have some extra time to do his priestly duties, no. He worked hard as all the people in the concentration camp he was to totally exhausted at the end of the day, but yet he found strength to give strength to others, to give Jesus to others. Sleeping little to celebrate masses, to hear confessions, because they need me. They need Jesus. I need to give them Jesus, no matter the cost. So his death was a logical, natural consequence of his lifestyle. What would be a logical, natural consequence of your lifestyle? Reflect on that today. Before the Blessed Sacrament, the best. And don't be afraid to face the truth. Because heroes are not born out of illusions. Heroes are born out of truth. Even if that's the truth about your weakness today, offer your weakness to Jesus and he will make you a hero. Living for others and dying for others.
Do you still feel the crosses in your hands? Are you ready to say yes? Like Pope Francis would ask. Take a look at the crucifix in your hand and turn it around and see the empty space on the other side. That's the invitation for you. By this sign of the cross, of the crucifix, Jesus asks you today, do you want to live like I did? Do you want to follow my lifestyle? Are you brave enough to choose mercy, living for others and dying for others? Mercy costs. We see it also cost Jesus his life. If you and I decide today to choose Jesus again, to choose his ways, to follow him, this will also cost us much. Just think now about all these situations in contradiction to your plans, dreams, in contradiction to your will. That's the cross. Maybe at first this will be little things, but these little things prepare you for a bigger offerings. And as you will feel that mercy costs, that it is really the cross of your life, heavy, ugly, painful, Remember that this is where you are, but on the other side of your cross is Jesus. So don't be afraid because he's always with you. He will never, ever leave you alone with your suffering, with your struggles. Following Jesus won't be easy. He never said that. He never promised that. Follow me, it will be easy. No. But it will be beautiful. Living your life to the full. Demanding, but fascinating. If anyone wishes to come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily follow me. For whoever wishes to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. Are you ready to say yes? If you are, Put on your necklaces, the, the crosses you are holding in your hands. Put them back to your neck. Kiss the crosses uh, you've been holding in your hands during the talk. And say, maybe whispering or maybe just in your hearts, say it, yes, Jesus, I am ready to follow you. Amen. Awesome. Cool. 
Well, uh, that was a beautiful talk. I would have loved to have been there um, and have heard her speak, spoke, speak live. Um, I find that the message of divine mercy has so much. If you've ever seen St. Faustina's diary, you will know how large it is and how much God's uh, Jesus said to her um, through those pages. And there definitely is something that will touch you um, in any season of your life, uh, just dependent on where you are and where you find God calling you to. And so I really hope and pray that something of Sister Guadia's talk stood out to you. Um, and it is such an invitation to pick up our our small crosses and perhaps in your life right now you're experiencing large crosses. And I just pray that that talk gave you the courage and the strength and inspired you to pray for the grace to really take up those crosses and um, trust in in Jesus because he carries those crosses with you. And what a better day to ask than today on Divine Mercy Sunday. So I'm just gonna see now. Um, oh, Father Chris, if you're watching and you just wanna request one more time, I missed it. Um, so Father Chris Petrashko is going to be joining us. Um, he is such a little wealth of knowledge. Well, not little, sorry. <laughs> He's a man. <laughs> um, but once he comes on here, I'm going to introduce him. So I'm just going to wait and see if uh, his request comes back up. Perhaps you've met Father Chris before. Um, if so, obviously you've been graced by his presence. In the Diocese of London, we are so blessed um, to have so many priests who dedicate their lives to serving youth and family uh, in their ministry. So here he comes. Let's see. Father Chris, are you on? No, and you just requested I just turned it in. So just one moment here and I'm gonna see if I can get Father Chris on. Invite him. Um, so I've made some, uh, I'm just gonna see here what's going on. If you've been with us the past couple of weeks, you know that sometimes I'm kind of like left to my own devices and my phone to figure out how to get people on here. So I really appreciate everyone's patience and sticking with it um, because it seems simple, but it seems to always be a bit more tricky than one would hope, but that's okay. So um, maybe if Father Chris is able to request one more time, Give me a second. Apparently, I need a different browser and have to download the other one. No problem. So maybe while that's going on, I'm just going to bring up the um, slides here. Maybe, maybe even that won't work today. But anyway, I've created a couple questions for us to really uh, dive deeper into the talk. And I find that talks, um, I've been listening to a lot of them since our period of self-isolation has began um, just to continue nourishing my heart and um, seeing where, oops, it's gone, um, and seeing where uh, God is calling me into a deeper relationship with him. Um, but I think that um, with anything, there can be so much information that we just need uh, some time to reflect. And sometimes those prompts can be really helpful. So whether you pray with a journal and you are feeling called um, to have journal time or um, you just want to take these things to prayer um, in the own quietness of your own home and your heart, um, a couple of the things that I wanted to um, discuss, I don't know if you can still see me anymore, I can't see myself, but um, a couple of the things I wanted to discuss was what does trust mean to you? So um, as uh, Sister uh, Guadia said, um, trust uh, Jesus, I trust in you. So trust can be a really daunting word. Um, trust was my word of the year for 2019. Um, it was a word that I was feeling I was calling like um, being called deeper into just in leaning into God's plan for my life because there was a lot of uncertainty and unknowns. Um, so trust can be very personal. 
it can be a very scary word. It can be um, a, a daunting word, even a doubting word, because we think, oh, if I trust in God, it means that I'm like completely surrendering. And there's this illusion of control when we hold on to things. So trust can be very, very important. Uh, obviously, if we're going to completely give over our crosses and unite our suffering to Jesus's. So that's one part. The other question I have for you is what does mercy mean to you? Sister Guadia said at the beginning of her talk that she herself was not going to um was not going to give a definition of mercy um, because mercy didn't need a definition. So, I mean, that that in and of itself allows you to ponder that with Jesus and say, Jesus, what does mercy mean? mean? What do you want mercy to mean in my life? Perhaps you have a challenging relationship in your life with a sibling um, or a friend um, and you have to ask for God's mercy every day just to um, be understanding and to be patient and to be kind and to be a witness of Christ's love to that person. I don't know who that person could be in your life. Um, but perhaps mercy could be mercy towards yourself, um, mercy on ourselves and having a little bit more self-compassion the way God loves us and loving ourselves in a similar way such as that. So mercy can have lots of different components. In the term, in the way that um, Sister Guadia kind of framed it in terms of it being the year of mercy and um, having Pope Francis going to Auschwitz during her talk, um, which I believe was in 2016, that would have been, World Youth Day in Poland. Um, and obviously Pope Francis there praying for mercy on all the souls and the lives lost during World War II. And so mercy has very, very vast and large, almost unimaginable, incomprehensible ways that it stretches. And then there are very specific, intimate and personal ways that mercy can connect to us. Uh, you can try now, Father Chris. So let's just do that. I just accepted you. So just Chrome, sorry, I didn't realize I needed that. Nope. Um, you can try one more time. I've tried accepting you, so. Um, invite as a presenter. Oh, maybe that'll work. Did you get that? Brother Chris, I just invited you as a presenter, so. Anyway, well, we just figured that out. So yeah, mercy, its definition can stretch so wide. Um, but I invite you to find like the personal way that mercy how it means to you and he's joined the room yay hi father chris how are you if he has an iphone it might work there if it isn't on his browser thank you olia you have a beautiful name olia i've never seen it spell like that we will wait and see um he's here somewhere Anyway, so the last thing, the last reflection question that I had that wouldn't pop up was um, that uh, the crosses that we carry um, and how uh, the crosses can be um, very different depending on your seasons of life. And so I invite you to take that to prayer and journaling um, in terms of it shows me on right now. Oh, it shows you on right now. Amazing. I just can't see you, but can you see me? Father Chris. Um, hi, Father Chris. I can see you. Oh, it's so nice. I wish I could see you. Oh, there you are. Okay. Oh, perfect. Hi. I can't hear you. Anyway, um, I'll just quickly finish up while while he sees while he gets his volume going. Anyway, the crosses in our lives, depending on any season, can vary. Um, and you know, right now in our time of 
uh, self isolation and this call to, you know, distance ourselves from our family and friends, that can be a cross. And perhaps you are really struggling with that right now. You're un you're struggling with the uncertainty and the doubt of how long is this going to last? It's Easter season, but I don't feel the joy of Easter. Um, and you're really struggling and that can be a cross. And we are invited to unite our suffering and our crosses to Jesus's. And just as Jesus had help carrying his own cross to also Jesus can help us carry our crosses. And so that is such a beautiful image of trust, mercy and carrying our crosses. I still can't hear you, but if you're wondering. Um, this presenter. Okay. So, um, anyway, that is a little bit of my own kind of uh, ramblings in my own mind of takeaways and reflections of how we can go deeper uh, based on Sister Guadia's talk. Um, so I invite you to, again to, just to journal and pray with that. Um, and we have the time now. So what better time? Anyway, I'm going to stop for a moment. I'm just going to see if I can help Father Chris. Um, no, maybe other people can hear him. If you can hear Father Chris in the, in the can maybe you can comment. Um, Have you tried it without your headphones? Can you use some picture to Adam? You might have to reconnect. Okay, I'm going to try and add you again, Father Chris, if that's okay. So I'm gonna eject you and then I'm gonna re-add you. Okay, perfect. It's back to me again, okay. Okay, I've invited him as a um, presenter. I'm just going to... Maybe he's doing the room again. Okay, perfect. Can you hear me? Hello? <laughs> oh, sugar. Hey. Um, <laughs> maybe you want to like try taking your headphones off. I'm just, I'm just trying to see. I um, don't know why. I just know that at the beginning it wasn't working for mine, so. Um, Oh, everyone else can hear you. That's nice. <laughs> Except for me. It's just you and I. What's up with that? Okay. Okay. That's so funny. So my mom's watching downstairs and she just comes up and she's like, I can hear him, but I can't hear you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to quickly introduce you because I have a little mini bio here and then I'm just going to let you go off and say what you want to say. Unfortunately, I won't be able to like summarize it because I can't hear you, um, but I'll be listening with my heart <laughs> um, and then we can we can just go from there. Maybe maybe oh, maybe now you lost sound. Well, he's not talking now, so maybe that's why you can't hear him anyway. So Father Chris um, is our special guest this evening and he was born and raised in London, and he attended St. Robert's Elementary School 
and John Paul II Secondary School. He then went to King's College before entering St. Peter's Seminary, and he also spent a year in Sarnia working at the parishes of St. Joseph, St. Benedict, and Our Lady of Mercy before being ordained to the priesthood for the Diocese of London by Bishop Favreau on April 28th. Oh, wow, your anniversary is coming up so soon, 2012. Father Chris states that the priesthood is not so much something that he chose, but rather that was chosen for him by God, a calling. He enjoys camping, fishing, and sharing his faith with others. He is quite active through Facebook and other social networks as it provides an opportunity to explain and show the love of the Catholic Church's teaching, particularly those who are not easily accepted by contemporary culture. So Father Chris, thank you so much for joining us. Um, I think he has to put his headphones back in. Perfect, everyone's so helpful. Anyway, thank you so much for joining us and I'm just gonna let you take it away from here. Hey, I'm just online, everyone with the tech support. <laughs> um, I, apparently they can't hear them. No. I'm back or he's back. Okay, <laughs> three is the holy number. So, um, Adam just suggested, Father Chris, you, I'm gonna eject you again. You're gonna come back in and you're gonna leave your headphones on. Um, and we'll try it one more time through there. And then, um, yeah. So, okay, goodbye. I'll talk to you in a bit. <laughs> You can hear him, and then you can't. It's gonna play real quick. Well, I've re-invited him as a presenter, so hopefully this time it works. Maybe you can rattle your beads. Um, but in the meantime, if you wanna um tell me in the comments um or maybe maybe we won't need to i was gonna come up with an activity for us to do but we will see okay can everyone hear me they're gonna have to tell you yeah. <laughs> um yeah here maybe connie or adam or brian if you could just let us know. You can hear me. All right. Awesome. Yes. Yes. Okay. Everyone can. I Perfect. guys, I'm Yay. so okay, I'm so sorry. Okay. I'm so go. sorry. And pick? thank you for having <laughs> thank I'm you for having me on, guys. Quickly. Okay. Anyways, guys, uh, I'm sorry that it's taken a while to to get on here, but I'm very happy to be with all of you. Uh, during this COVID-19 um, pandemic. It's kind of a crazy world out there. And I think it's a time uh, that's really, we're really blessed to be able to reflect on divine mercy. I'm going to abbreviate my talk just so you guys are not here a little longer than you expected. Um, but one of the things that I really liked in the video that we just watched um, was the emphasis on mercy, not just being about forgiveness. A lot of the time when I grew up, whenever I heard the word mercy, 
I always thought it had to do with forgiving people and that's part of it. However, um, mercy is such a broader um, way of loving other people. And I really find comfort in reflecting on the actual definition of the Greek word that we often use to describe mercy, which is misericordia. And um, it basically means uh, misery and heart, cordia and misere. And so those who are merciful are willing to give their heart to those who are miserable. Those who are merciful can give their heart to those who are suffering or in need of compassion and love. And the church teaches that there's really two veins of how to extend this mercy to others. Because like Sister was saying, we can't just leave it out of de definition. We need to uh, incarnate it or we need to allow it to happen in our actions and relationships. So uh, some of the works of mercy uh, that are temporal include the feeding of the hungry, to give water to the thirsty, to clothe the naked, to shelter the homeless, to visit the sick, to visit the imprisoned or ransom the captive, to bury the dead. Now, a lot of these things we can't do right now uh, in terms of the restrictions that we're, we're suffering as a community. But I think one thing that I've been seeing, at least more in my family, is reaching out to um, people who might be lonely, giving them a phone call, um, not just thinking about how the pandemic is affecting me, but also thinking about how it's affecting others. You know, I go to the grocery store, I saw a high school student there, grade 12, and my heart just broke for her because she's missing prom, she's missing graduation. A lot of things are up in the air. We don't know where they're going. Uh, people are, are suffering losses of hopes and dreams that they had. Um, and then there are other people who are suffering, you know, uh, I have a friend who is, um, his mother has cancer and, you know, uh, she's in stage four of that. And um, his sister is a doctor and she can't visit that, her mom because she might expose her to something. Uh, it's just heartbreaking to see this. And this is where mercy is needed, that that love of God needs to be brought into places where maybe we're feeling like it's a bit empty of love. And I find that's what God does. God gravitates towards those dark places where light or goodness need to shine and burn brightly. Uh, there's also spiritual works of mercy. And that's uh, one of my favorite ones is always the first one. It's to instruct the ignorant. I always find that phrase ignorant fascinating because it's usually interpreted as an insult. But Jesus himself said that we're all students before him. And so all of us are ignorant. Um, but instructing each other on um, how to be able to, to love uh, the whole truth is something that really can open up our life to new experiences. Um, Ignorance is not bliss. Actually, it can lead to a lot of problems, miscommunications, and uh, sometimes lead to a pattern of life that's actually holding us back from something even better. Uh, another is to counsel the doubtful, so giving hope to people, uh, to admonish the sinner. Okay, that one, it, it's not always an enjoyable one, especially for those who like to avoid conflict. Um, but again, if we love the sinner, uh, if we love the person who's doing something wrong, um, we want to help them go on the right path. Not because their sin personally irritates me, uh, but because we want them to experience the joy of following Christ. To bear patiently those who wrong us. And, and just a note on these two things. Um, we, we are terrible people at mercy if we ourselves don't first learn how to receive these kinds of gifts so if we aren't willing to learn or if we aren't willing to be admonished for sin or if we aren't um, willing to allow people to be patient with us then we it's harder for us to be able to do those things for other people and so we have to kind of see the need in it for ourselves and, and what that does is it allows us to relate to the people that we're talking to. Instead of putting ourselves above them, we're able to kind of meet them where they are and to kind of be in solidarity with them, even if we're the one correcting them. To forgive offenses, to comfort the afflicted, 
and to pray for the living and the dead. So those are all the works of mercy. Those are concrete things that we can do. And they're broken into temporal or kind of very physical actions that we can do, as well as spiritual that cover the relational side of our relationship with God and with each other. What I would like to do is, you know, I'm so glad the theme was on the crucifix because um, this crucifix, not this particular one, but the crucifix in general, for me, has um, been a huge source of conversion. Uh, I I grew up and I went to Mary Immaculate in London, Ontario. That was my home parish. And they have this big old crucifix right in the center of the church, right underneath the tabernacle. And I spent so much time just looking at it. And I don't think I was even consciously aware that I was looking at it, but just looking at Jesus on this cross and just allowing everything that happened with him to kind of sink in. I don't know if, you, like I um, recently have been taking up um, planting a, an avocado seed. So I, um, one of them actually grew. And uh, one of the things I am terrible at doing is growing plants. I usually kill everything that I have. I, I usually ask for the types of plants that, um, that, <laughs> that don't die easily and they still die anyway. But anyways, this one avocado tree that I'm growing in my room, uh, it hasn't died yet. And one of the things I noticed though, is if I don't water it regularly, it kind of gets hard on the surface so that when I pour water, it spools on the top of it and it takes a while for it to sink in and be saturated. Um, when we're meditating on the crucifixion or on the death of Christ, it takes a while for the wisdom and the beauty and the warmth and the love and maybe even the challenges that come from that to kind of sink in, in that meditative form of prayer. You know, one of the things I like to do when I'm about to confess my sins or to do an act of penance is I, I look at the hands and I look at that nail and I, I imagine, I imagine that my sin is that nail going in. Gabriel, you have a question. So please feel free to throw that out anyone as I go. Okay. Um, one of the things I just find it very important for us to kind of allow what God has done for us to sink in. But the one thing that I think is really important about mercy is that God's mercy is not there just to forgive our sins. It's also there. And this is a point that St. Faustina makes in her diary it's also there to prevent us from sinning. And so there's a mercy in avoiding sin as much as there is in being forgiven for sin. And one of the things that Jesus does on the cross is he shows us what our sin looks like on his body. And it's revealing to us. So that re revelation of looking at the cross and saying, this is what my sin looks like. This is what mortal sin looks like, that it kills, that it, it's mortal. It, it doesn't endure in life. That, that's what I'm doing in my heart spiritually to Christ every time I fall into sin. Allowing ourselves to let that sink in, I think, allows for that change of heart. And so where do we find the biblical roots for that? We find it in um, Exodus where Moses is going through the desert with his people and they're all grumbling. They're all offending God. And um, basically God has done all these things for them and they're very ungrateful. So what happens is they end up uh, getting punished and all these little snakes come into the, the desert. And as the snakes come in, they're biting them and they're poisoning them. People are about to die. So what is the remedy that God suggests to Moses? Well, we now have it as a symbol of healthcare, but it's that bronze serpent on a staff. Why in the world would God ask for an image of something evil to be the source of their healing? And so we later hear in scripture that it's by his wounds, that evil that we are healed. And so there's actually a fulfillment taking place here of what was foreshadowed in the Old Testament is that bronze serpent 
is a way of showing the people this is what your sin invited. Look at it. Look at it honestly. And just see the ugliness of it. Now, this isn't something that our culture would probably recommend highly uh, because it might bring someone to a place called inordinate shame. But the point of this kind of reflection isn't to make us hate ourselves. The point is to make us hate the sin. And so we come to a place where we're all sinners, but we come to a place where we look at the sin and we're able to say, I don't love that anymore. I see it for what it is now. And what it is, is it's crucifying my Lord and I love him and I don't want to do that. And so it's going to change my heart. So when Jesus is put on a hill for everyone to see, Christ is reflecting back to us our sin, but he's not wagging his finger at us. He's not shaming us. He's not um, berating us or even trying to do the same thing to us that we're doing to him. Rather, what Christ is doing is he's shedding his blood that as we curse him, he blesses us. If you ever see an image of a crucifix where Jesus's hand is like this, that's uh, an old formula for a priest's blessing. The two fingers represent the humanity and divinity of Christ and the three fingers together represent the Trinity. And so with the totality of God, we're blessed. So when Christ's hands are like this on the cross, he is blessing us from the cross as we curse him with our sin. And what I love about the divine mercy, divine mercy image is that as we pierce the side of Christ, as we do something cruel to him, the only reaction that he has is for blood and water to flow from his side. In other words, to forgive. And that's just the generosity of God. And so not only are we looking at the cross, which is what our sin looks like, but we're also looking at this just unworldly, amazing love. So I'm just going to look through some of the questions right now, just for a pause. So the first one I got from uh, one of uh, one of our questions is how to exercise patience with our siblings. <laughs> I have two older sisters and I'm still learning how to do this. Um, I'm sure they are equally trying to do the same thing with me. Uh, patience can be a virtue. Um, we're called to be patient and we're called to um, tolerate, if you will, certain evils. Uh, and we always are patient for the other person's good. We're always patient for their own good. If we become patient, though, as a way of just avoiding conflict when conflict needs to happen, that's called enabling. So we have to kind of just decipher in our head the difference between being patient for a person. Maybe they're trying to work on a certain vice and we need to give them some space to grow naturally in that. Um, and maybe they're trying and we just need to respect that they just kind of screwed up here a little bit. Um, or if maybe we're just not challenging them then we need to challenge them. So it's it, it's in our own situation, it can be difficult, especially when we're living very close to the person because we don't see the whole picture and we get too close to it, too emotionally locked up in it. My experience has been moving out from my sisters has actually improved our relationship. So um, sometimes a little space can actually give us a better clarity on how to approach a subject. Another one is uh, from Lori. Hey, Lori. Um, how would you explain mercy to someone who doesn't believe they have ever sinned or needs forgiveness because they see themselves only as a good person, which they are, but we are all sinners. Um, I can't judge a person for why they might think that they're not a sinner, but we all are. And, um, I think it takes courage to come to a place where we can say, I'm not God, I'm not perfect. I haven't loved people um, maybe as best as I could have. And uh, to be able to maybe not choose to be preoccupied with all the things we do well, but to be willing to work on ourselves where we need to grow as well. Um, but there's not much you can do for a person who's not open to that. Um, all what you can do is witness to them. Uh, examples in your own life maybe of where you've been forgiven. 
and where you want to, to be changed. And I think people might relate better to a personal testimony than a teaching on that subject. Um, for example, I gave the story today that I punched a hole through the wall when I was in grade nine because I got caught by my parents forging my mom's signature on a math test I failed. <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing to mention that to you, but anyway, there it is. And I was very upset and that's kind of how I dealt with it. Um, my dad came home and I thought I was gonna be punished forever. And he opened the door to my room, came in and he said, um, he said, I get to teach you how to repair drywall. And I remember that reaction. It wasn't what I was expecting him to say, but uh, his point was, I'm going to allow this bad decision that you made to turn in an opportunity to spend time with you. And I think that's what God does when he's dealing with mercy is it, it, scripture puts it this way, where sin is grace abounds all the more. And so God uses our sin, our happy fault, and he uses it to grow even closer to us, which is an amazing, incredible, generous thing for God to have. So uh, that's why Jesus says that those who have sinned, uh, those who have been forgiven much, love much. And so there's something enviable, in a sense, uh, for those who have sinned, is that they can grow even closer to Christ uh, in, that, um, in that sense that they can experience this mercy that comes from God. So maybe even harboring a yearning to receive God's mercy, of course, not encouraging sin itself, but you get my point there. Oh, you're welcome. Happy Easter, Lori. So I think uh, moving forward, um, the one thing that I, I, I think there's, there's two sins against hope that I just want to conclude on and reflect on. And uh, the sins in the catechism of the church talk about extremes. We tend to go to extremes. Um, one is called presumption and the other one is called despair. And I think we find ourselves usually leaning towards one or the other. The sin of despair is this belief that God is not. Father Chris, I'm just going to hop on for a quick yeah, second. Yeah, sure. Glad you're on. Yeah. Okay, can I continue to talk or were you going to say something? Sorry. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, cool. <laughs> I'm live streaming it off my phone on Facebook so I can hear you. Um, but there's a bit of a lag between you and I and uh, this. Sorry, I didn't. Yeah, anyway, I'm going to let you I'm going to let you quick finish. I'm just going to say to our viewers in this side, because um, I'm just cognizant cognizant of time. And so if you have any other questions, rather than myself formulating questions that I may have, ultimately I want your questions to be answered. So if you have any questions for Father Chris, um, whether you, you can privately message them to us and we will all see it, um, or you can put it to the, uh, to the chat um, and we can answer it that way. But um, we're going to a lot for like probably 10 minutes of uh, Father, Father Chris just uh, answering your questions or like giving more of a teaching. Thank you so much, Father Chris. It has been such a joy thus far. So um, I'm a lagged here right now, but you guys can all go ahead and continue asking your questions. Thank you so much, Lori and Gabriel. Um, but yeah, we'll do another like 10 minutes for questions. Okay. Sure. Okay. So I, I just think that, um, our world needs mercy, but it needs a, a kind of version of it that's genuine. And sometimes what we're giving people is, is either a rigorous scrupulosity, which leads to despair, or we're giving people the other extreme, which is this kind of presumptuous entitlement. Um, so how do we navigate that? Uh, there's a lot of people that are just torn apart. They just rip themselves. They do violence to themselves as they're looking at their sin. And um, that's, God doesn't want that. that, that's despair. And that's what I love about St. Faustina. She talks about God's mercy being like this ocean and our sin is just this drop. And the pride that's associated with despair is that my sin is bigger than God. And I'm sorry, but nothing is bigger than God. God is way bigger than anything that you can do. And so 
our faith is just giving credit to God. We're saying, I believe that he can forgive me, not because of me, but because of how big he is, how amazingly big his love and mercy is. It's just something out of this world. And so despair actually can be a sin because we're, we're treating God with less dignity than he actually has. We're, we're almost emptying the cross of its power and we're saying that he died for nothing. Like his death doesn't accomplish anything. And so that that's a dangerous thing to fall into. It's offensive to God. I often think of, you know, when my mom would do something that I didn't like and I'd say, why do you hate me? Um, just as a little child, I would say that. But how offensive is that? Because my mom did all sorts of things for me all the time. The other extreme, and this is just to conclude, uh, is simply this, that um, presumption is this idea that uh, that God will forgive me so I can just keep doing what I'm doing. I don't really have to change. But the church teaches us that we need to repent. We need to regret what we've done, not just fear hell, not just fear punishment. But we need to actually love God enough to say, I wish I didn't do that to you because I love you. And presumption is this kind of idea like I just can keep doing what I'm doing because God's like, it's OK. And God isn't OK with sin. It's, it's so contrary to what he wants in his kingdom as a good community. And it's so contrary to what he wants for us and what he himself deserves from us. And so presumption is just a bit of entitlement that it's, I, I call it the spoiled brat syndrome. Um, so yes, we can trust that God is great and loves us and is very faithful. But on the other hand, we have to look at that as a gift and not something that we're entitled to. So another question that was asked in private was, um, do, what does the church kind of, how does it categorize suicide and where does it fall into that? Well, suicide is a big topic. Uh, there's many different, unfortunately, different ways that suicide can happen. We can think of kamikaze pilots, you know, just kind of flying an airplane and just blowing uh, a group of people up. But most of the time when we talk about suicide, we're talking about people who have mental health struggles. So they might be struggling with depression or anxiety or a whole spectrum of different things. The church is teaching that is that the act of suicide is gravely wrong. And the reason why it's gravely wrong is because of how important and valuable that person is. Nothing is evil in the church's teaching uh, unless there's something good lost, okay? Nothing is evil unless there's something good lost. And the good of a person who commits suicide, they have murdered themselves. They have taken themselves out of the community and what the church is saying, that has not just hurt them, that has hurt all of us because they are valuable. They are precious. They belong in this community. They are part, a member of this community, at the hands and feet of Christ as part of the church. This is gravely wrong. But we also understand as a church that not everyone fully understands what they're doing when they make those decisions. So a person who's stuck in maybe some form of mental illness they may not have full culpability for what they're choosing because their mind wasn't clear enough to make a clear decision. They didn't know what else to do. So the church would teach that suicide is a grave injustice against the community, against the individual, and primarily against God, whom, whose image were created in the likeness. Life itself is a gift. But when it comes to shifting blame or talking about that person's eternal salvation, we leave it in the hands of our merciful God. And if you know anyone, a lot of us do, um, if you know anyone that commits suicide, offering the chaplet of divine mercy for them is a wonderful gift um, because we just defer to God. God knows what they are able to say yes to and no to, but we know that God um, will do everything within his power to bring every one of us home because he died for every single one of us. And so we can trust that God is doing that, and we can trust that there is the possibility of hope for those people who have committed suicide. So that's a good question. Thank you for bringing that up. Any other questions? Because we're right at the nine o'clock mark. Oh, I see. I see what you're saying. So um, I suppose that 
the question, the next question, follow up question was, does it fall into despair or presumption? Um, I would say both, uh, because despair is this kind of hopelessness, the sense of nothing is good or nothing can save me. Um, but the presumption is the entitlement to take your own life that I presume upon myself to be able to end my life. Um, to presume maybe that um, if we are of sound mind, that God will accept this decision, um, that's also dangerous. We shouldn't do that because uh, God doesn't accept that decision. It's, morally speaking, it's, it's not right. Um, but there's still hope. And so hope is in between despair and presumption. And so that that's where we need to be. But a person who commits suicide might be in a little bit of both presumption and despair. It just depends on what angle you look at it. Does that answer your question? Okay, it answers this question, good. Okay, so I think I'm I'm finished. Oh, uh, Father Chris, I'm assuming you can hear me right now. I can. Hi, okay. Well, thank you so much to everyone for their questions. Um, I really appreciate the vulnerability and the courage that it takes to ask some of those questions because... Okay, it answers this question. <laughs> yeah, it's lagged here. I'm just trying to keep up. So um, it takes such vulnerability and courage to ask mm -hmm. questions like that because there is no shame of having those types of questions. Um, so thank you so much, Father Chris, and for everyone for asking those questions because um, whether you had it, I'm sure someone else was thinking it also. So Father Chris, I was wondering if you would, um, in a moment, mind closing us in prayer, if uh, for a blessing. I just want to thank everyone for joining us uh, uh, this evening on Divine Mercy Sunday. It is such a gift uh, to be able to spend my Sunday nights with you. Um, as you probably noticed, we switched the program off of Project YM as we were finding that for our target audience, uh, there may be some other resources that would be um, best suited to help you growing in your faith. So um, myself and Connie and our entire Peer Life uh, core team is working during core uh, tool courses and help you grow your roots deeper in this time as it is springtime. And I uh, uh, this seasons. So we ask that you stay tuned on our social media sites as we um, say to you what is happening. Um, however, we will be teaching our programming from Sunday nights to Friday nights, and it will be at 7.30. So I'm just going to quickly pull up my notes. Go off, Father. <laughs> as we bring a bit of a change around, and we want to make sure that everything is being communicated to you. So. Um, just a reminder that on f this coming Friday, April 24th at 7.30, um, we will be having our uh, Pure Life gathering. Um, it was supposed to be in person. However, it will be um, on a live stream with myself. And we will be um, going on a series of Father Michael Schmitz Schmitz's um, question and answer uh, videos. And Father Chris Petrashko, who you met this evening, will be joining us. So we really look forward to that and more information about that will come, especially regarding signing up for small groups. We're trying to make it um, as real as possible for you um, and trying to connect with you uh, despite our distance. So please stay posted for that and more information will be coming. Um, but other than that, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Um, May the mercy of God just overwhelm your life in a way that, as Father Chris said, God is not bigger than, or he is bigger. Sorry, I'm like reading my notes upside down. He is bigger than anything you could ever do. And so any fears, any doubts, any anxieties, um, any questions that are burning on your heart, you can take them to the Lord. And his merciful love is awaiting you and it welcomes you. And just before you leave, Father Chris, I wanted to say that I thought it was so funny that 
you're like, I can't even keep alive a plant that requires the least <laughs> amount of work. And it's so funny because I see that to people too. So they'll bring me succulents, which are desert mm. plants and require. And like, I still seem to like butcher that. So yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm glad I'm not <laughs> the only one who, who suffers through that. That could be a little cross too. I'm pretty sure not having a green thumb. Anyway, I'm just going to leave it to Father Chris now to um, give us a uh, closing prayer and a final blessing. So thank you so much. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you so much, Father. Uh, and you will be seeing Father and I on Friday. So thank you so much and God bless. <laughs>